I'd first like to introduce you to this web resource called the Academic Phrase Bank from the University of Manchester. This is another idea of organizing phrases for repackaging for your own purposes. And they have some very nice organization for us. Relevant to this week's topic, I will point out one section from the top here but I actually think that these general language functions are more useful when it comes to speaking. Again, this is mostly based off of written information. So do be aware that written information tends to be more formal, and you don't always have to be formal when presenting data. Let me just show you how this works a little bit. I think reporting results might work for us. And it might seem at first that referring to data in a table or chart would be good for our thing today. And it's partly good because it uses phrases like table one shows or figure one compares. We probably won't say that necessarily in a spoken presentation, including things like the table below. But we can take some of the ideas here and just rework them to fit our needs. So for example, instead of saying, as shown in figure one, just say, as shown in the figure, the X group reported significantly more Y than the other two groups. Something like that. Or um, it's also nice to say, as can be seen from this, or from these graphs, we can see, and so on. So please consider that you'll need to remix some of these phrases. But I really suggest looking through some of these and they're quite nice. But more immediate for us this week, I think there are two tabs on the general language functions section. That would be describing trends and describing quantities. Let's start with the trends. Some of this I like quite a lot. The, the graph shows that there has been a slight fall in the number of divorces in England and Wales since 1981. Of course, you know, ignore this part. I should, this should be an indication to you that the data is sourced from a lot of social science and humanities work rather than the physical sciences, which does affect the way people talk, but um, not not enough for us to worry about it at this point. I really like these adjectives here. Um, you know, a slight fall, a steep rise, and so on. And of course, you can mix it, a, a slight decline, a gradual drop. If you're not careful when presenting your data, you're going to use the same words again and again and again. For example, as you can see, case A dropped by 50%, Case B dropped by 40%, and case C dropped by 2%, or you know, something like that, which is okay, but not so interesting for the audience's ears. So I want to encourage you to add some seasoning to your words when presenting data, because I've been to it, I assume you've been to it, a presentation that is logical, it's good, but the presenter just reads the data like it's a list. And the truth is, I can read it faster than the speaker can say it. If they are not going to make it more lively or purposefully highlight the significant and interesting information, it might sadly, be better for them to just put on the data slide and be quiet for a few seconds, <laughs> which is not always bad, but we'll get to that in another lesson. I just want to highlight with these words here that unfortunately, they are not in order of degree. So I would like to reorder these for you uh, with slight being the weakest and so I'm going to reorder them from uh, from weakest to strongest, okay? So, for example, um, a slight fall. After that, I would probably say uh, 
a, 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 a gradual fall, a steady fall, a marked fall, or marked fall, a sharp fall, and a steep fall. However, it's not like these words are defined in a specific way. So that's why you noticed I hesitated between steady and gradual. Probably different people interpret those in different ways. Same with steep and sharp. I interpret steep as being a little bit stronger than sharp, but someone else might interpret it the other way. So don't depend on these words to do too much work for you. I remember some years ago I was teaching a class and I introduced gradual versus dramatic, which are nice words, nothing wrong with those words. However, some weeks later I noticed my students were using just those two words for everything. If it was a lot, they would say dramatic. If it was, if it was somewhat, they would say gradual. You need to know the meaning of the words that you use. So please don't feel pressure to use all of these words, but say you have, you know, three or four options in your tool belt that you're ready to use in a natural way and make sure you really do know what the words mean. All right, all right. So, uh, but you get the idea from this, how to use this website. It's pretty cool. Um, there's lots of, uh, you might not like some of these, but you know, what is striking in this table is, what stands out in this chart is, this is a cool sentence structure. So uh, choose the one or two from each of these groups that you are comfortable saying. Everybody has different words that roll off their tongue easier than others. Other people like the sound of certain words or whatever. That's your choice to make and um, it's totally fine to copy these structures. That's not plagiarism because these are units that are used again and again by many people. Okay, so anyway, I recommend taking a look at the describing trends and also the describing quantities which has uh, fractions, which can be really important, proportions, which are also quite important, and so on. But I'm actually going to go over this information on a different sheet in the next video. So I'm not going to go over them here, but um, I like the way that they put them into sentences here with options. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail though in the next video, uh, rather in two videos because the next video is going to be listen and repeat.